Therefore, instead of a big spike and a big crash, you're gonna have a steadier glucose response to that same dessert. This is an example here where you can see that I've had pineapple, which is also something sweet containing sugar, as a snack, bigger spike, or after a meal, smaller spike. Hello angels and welcome to the Glucose Goddess show. In this episode, I want to talk about the difference between a pleasure decision and a health decision when it comes to our food choices. And the reason I want to talk about this is because last weekend um, I was giving a talk and then somebody asked a question at the end of the talk. And the question went something like this. They said, I'm doing all of the good glucose hacks. By the way, if you don't have my glucose hacks, click the link in the description of this episode to get them. I'm doing all the hacks, you know, I'm having a savory breakfast, I'm doing all these things, but I still can't stop eating chocolate after dinner. What should I do? So my first reaction to that question is like, why do you want to stop eating chocolate after dinner? I don't think we need to cut out sugar from our diets. I don't think we need to deprive ourselves of the chocolate that we love. But there's this sense, in some people at least, that if they're eating anything that is sugary, anything that is a dessert, anything that is not you know, directly improving their health, that they're somehow failing. So with this woman who asked the question, I kind of went into her reasons for wanting to stop eating the chocolate. And she said that she felt guilty for eating the chocolate and like she wasn't doing everything right. Now, this whole concept to me feels like something we need to address because I don't think we should feel guilty when we eat something for enjoyment purposes when we eat a piece of chocolate after dinner. As long as we know why we're eating the chocolate, and in most cases it's because maybe we've had a long day, maybe eating chocolate in front of the TV just makes us feel good. Listen, I'm in the same situation. I eat chocolate after dinner most nights, and not just one piece, we're talking like 10 pieces. Because I've had a long day, I'm tired, I'm watching something on the TV, and I just want to kind of relax and give my brain that dopamine hit from the chocolate. And in those cases, I know that it's a pleasure decision. And I'm, I don't feel bad for eating that chocolate because it's super clear to me that I'm doing it for the pleasure it's giving me and out of enjoyment. So I think it's important to think about this concept. Some decisions we make for our health. For example, in the morning at breakfast, we generally have more willpower than after a long day and after dinner. And in the morning, having a savory breakfast is a really important health decision to make because it's gonna help our body short-term, long-term, help our energy, our glucose levels, our brain, our hormones. So that's an investment we can make in our health. But when it comes to what we do after dinner in front of the TV, it's okay that those decisions are not the most optimum thing to do for our glucose levels all the time. And in fact, I think that probably if we stress too much about eating the chocolate after dinner, we might actually be causing stress that is harming our health. So all this to say, I think we need to create a category of decisions around food that fall into the category of pleasure decisions. Another question I often get when I'm giving a talk after the talk is, what about alcohol? You know, are some alcohols better for my glucose levels than others? To which I reply, well, first of all, you should all know alcohol is a poison. It is really not good for us. No amount of alcohol is health promoting. For a long time, we thought one glass of wine a day is good for your vasodilation. Now the studies are showing us very clearly that the best amount of alcohol to drink is zero. So anytime you're drinking alcohol, you're making a pleasure decision. When you pick your alcohol is not where health happens. It's not when you're gonna optimize for your health, right? I don't want people to overthink and you know, choose the, their alcoholic drink based on which one is better for them because it's not good for them anyway. So in my opinion, it's better to just choose the one that you like and you enjoy because you're in that enjoyment category. You're not even trying to improve your health. You're just trying to have a good time and have a drink because I guess that's what you feel like doing. I personally do not drink. And for me, that's not my 
pleasure decision of choice. For me, it's the chocolate in front of the TV after dinner, 100%. That is my pleasure decision. That's when I make choices that are you know, good for my relaxation and my dopamine. Not the best health decisions, but it's okay. Balance is really important. Hey, really quickly, if you can't always do my food hacks and you want to eat the carbs that you love with less impact on your glucose levels, I have identified four molecules that if you combine them together in a capsule, you will create something that cuts the glucose spike of a meal by up to 40%. So something that's even more powerful than vinegar because vinegar only gets us to 30%. So the four molecules are mulberry leaf, lemon peel extract, cinnamon, and lots of incredible antioxidants from green vegetables. These molecules have over 25 clinical trials backing their impact on our glucose levels. 100% plant-based, 100% vegan, 100% natural. So you might be wondering, okay, well, where is this capsule that combines all these molecules that I can use? I'm happy to announce that I have created it for you. It's called anti-spike formula. You take two before a meal, it cuts the glucose spike of carbs by up to 40%. 100% made out of plants and tested by over 25 clinical trials. Link is in the description. Okay, back to the episode. Now let's discuss a little bit what happens in our brain when we actually make a pleasure decision. So let's take my case of the chocolate because I'm sure it's quite relatable. <laughs> the, the chocolate in front of the TV, the chocolate after dinner. When we eat chocolate or anything sweet for that matter, when the sweetness registers on our tongue, that sends a signal to our brain and it releases dopamine. Dopamine is the pleasure molecule. And as human beings, we seek out that pleasure molecule as much as we can. It's the same molecule that gets released when we play video games, we have sex, when we do drugs. The pleasure molecule is super addictive and eating something sweet is a simple and easy way to get a hit. And I get it. We all have extremely busy lives. We're stressed out. Life is difficult and tough. And if that piece of chocolate is going to give you momentary, momentary pleasure, 100% I understand that that's what we're gonna to decide to do. And it's okay, as long as when you're having the chocolate, you know you're doing it because you want some dopamine. On the other hand, when we eat something sweet, we're harming our body's ability to make energy. So sweet foods actually decrease the function of our mitochondria, which are the little organelles that are in charge of making energy in our body. And when these little mitochondria's function decreases, well, we become more tired. So we're eating the chocolate, we're getting the dopamine, but we're reducing our body's ability to make energy long-term. And now here's the kicker. It's totally okay to eat something sweet because we want the dopamine and because it's okay and we feel like it, as long as we know that it's not helping our energy levels. One thing that drives me crazy is when misleading marketing makes us believe that some sweet foods are good for our energy levels. So breakfast food is a really good example. Breakfast cereal, orange juice, those are actually just giving us dopamine, but the marketing messages makes us believe that they're giving us energy. They are not. They are just giving us pleasure. So another example is if I'm working late and I have to finish writing something and it's 11 p.m. and I'm sleepy and tired, I'm not going to drink coffee because then I'm not going to sleep throughout the night. I'm at my computer, I need to finish something and I know that even though the dopamine is not going to give me proper energy, that little boost of pleasure can help me get through something that is difficult. So I'm going to go reach for the chocolate bar and eat some chocolate as I'm working to help me get through those difficult hours of work that I need to get done. But as long as it's conscious, I think it's absolutely fine. And when we do eat the chocolate or the sugar, we have a few options. We can eat it on its own, anytime, anywhere, or if we want to get the maximum amount of dopamine with the minimal amount of impact on our health, we can use some of my hacks. That way, we still get to eat the sweet food and get the dopamine hit, but on the inside, we're protected against glucose spikes that are too big and have too many consequences. So an example, and when the lady asked this question this weekend, I told her, hey, at least you can tell yourself that you're having the chocolate and the sugar after a meal. 
that's already much better than if you had the chocolate on an empty stomach or between meals as a snack, because thanks to the existing food in your stomach from the meal, the sugar in the chocolate is gonna arrive more slowly into your bloodstream and create a smaller glucose spike. So let me go over a few hacks that you can use to reduce the impact of sugar you're eating, but still get the maximum amount of pleasure. The first and most important place I would start is, as I mentioned, avoid having sugar on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. So avoid the breakfast cereal, the breakfast muffins, the sweet pastries in the morning, avoid the fruit juice, because at that point, sure, you're gonna get some dopamine and maybe you want to get some dopamine in the morning, but you're gonna mess up your entire day's glucose curve and you're gonna feel so much worse by the time you get to dinner. So avoid sugar in the morning. And also in the morning, our willpower is usually at its highest. And during breakfast, we're usually alone. So we have less social pressure to eat something. We have less, fewer things available around us. We can sort of cater our kitchen to be sugar-free for all of our breakfast foods. And if you want really good savory breakfast recipes, there's a link in the description of this episode, uh, some free recipes from my recipe club. Now, that was the first one. So avoid sugar in the morning. Now, when you do eat sugar, the best time to eat sugar is as dessert, after your lunch, or after your dinner. Why? Because there's a lot of food in your stomach already, so the sugar will arrive at the end and sit on top, give you all the dopamine hit, but then it's gonna go through to your intestine quite slowly, and so the speed at which the sugar molecules are arriving into your bloodstream are gonna be quite slow. Therefore, instead of a big spike and a big crash, you're gonna have a steadier glucose response to that same dessert. This is an example here where you can see that I've had pineapple, which is also something sweet containing sugar, as a snack, bigger spike, or after a meal, smaller spike. Another example, M&Ms, on their own, big spike after a meal, smaller spike. And why do we care about the spike reduction? Well, we care about it for a million different reasons, but the one that's important here is that if you're somebody who tends to have cravings for chocolate and other sweet foods, and if once you have one piece, you cannot stop and you create a cravings or an addiction roller coaster for the whole day, using these hacks and reducing that spike is gonna help reduce the addiction for the rest of the day. So you can have one cookie and not find yourself six hours later having eaten 25 cookies. That's really key. So you can get maximum pleasure from the first cookie without creating a cycle of addiction for the rest of the day. Another easy thing you can do after you eat something sweet is use your muscles and move your body for 10 minutes. Why is this? Well, because every single part of our body from our fingers, to our toes, to our heart, to our biceps, to our brain, they use glucose for energy. And the more they contract, our muscles in particular, the more our muscles contract, the more they use glucose up. So we can use this to our advantage. After eating something sweet as dessert, well, get up and clean your apartment or maybe do some laundry, or maybe if you're watching TV like I love to do, maybe grab like a water bottle and do some bicep curls. That way you're getting all the dopamine from the sugar, but you're helping your body process it in a better way with less of a glucose spike going on. Another super easy one, before eating something sweet, have a tablespoon of vinegar in a tall glass of water. I know this sounds weird, but vinegar contains acetic acid. And acetic acid is gonna slow down how quickly those sugars break down into individual glucose molecules into your bloodstream. And that way it's gonna reduce the spike of that sweet food by up to 30%. And now for one more. Let's say it's the middle of the afternoon, you're at a birthday party, or maybe your coworker brought in some muffins, and you really wanna eat something sweet, and it's not during a meal, and it has to be right now in the middle of the afternoon. The hack is put some clothing on your carbs. So anytime you eat something sweet, think about adding to that sweet food some clothing, meaning some protein, some fat, or some fiber. In the case of a chocolate cake, and as you know by now, I'm a big chocolate fan. If you're having a chocolate cake in the middle of the afternoon, add to it some Greek yogurt or maybe 10 almonds. That way you're adding some protein and some fat, 
to that sugar and it's going to slow down how quickly that sugar makes its way to your bloodstream, therefore reducing the spike, therefore reducing the glucose roller coaster and reducing the addiction that the cake might kick off for the rest of the day. So there you have it. That was my little recap on pleasure decisions. So it's okay to eat sugar if you're doing it for pleasure and it's something that you're doing consciously. Totally fine. Don't feel guilty. It's okay to want dopamine. We're human. Life is tough. Dopamine feels good. I get it. I just want to help you avoid creating that cravings roller coaster from the first piece of sugar you're eating. So I don't want you to end up in a situation where after one cookie, you're craving sugar for the next 12 hours. And in order to avoid that, you want to use the hacks. Close on carbs, moving after eating, some vinegar and water, and having the sugar at the end of a meal instead of on an empty stomach. And that is all we have time for today. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time.